and coming soon on the Jackpot Button Lewis Productions in a few weeks time to mark its 35th anniversary since it first was broadcasted back in 1989 on ITV, famous tennis player Annabelle Croft presents the hit game show where two contestants, after being put six miles apart, must reunite and meet up with each other within 40 minutes to win a big cash prize. But there's a big catch, as the ever-so-mean Interceptor will be trying to zap the back of their backpacks to try and stop them from winning that cash prize. Will any of the contestants manage to evade the Interceptor and go on to win the cash prize? You can find out on the 35th anniversary repeat episodes of Interceptor, which are coming soon to Jackpot Button Lewis Productions over the next few weeks. This is definitely the place where I can see a murder has definitely been committed. But who could have done this dirty deed? Which of these nine rooms at Gravenly Manor? And which weapon was used? This is going to be quite the case to solve. Hmm. Oh, my apologies, everybody. Well, you've caught me doing some very interesting evidence and some research. What's up, guys? It's me, Jack Wright, here from Theatre Going Revival. And join me in just an hour's time, exclusively live on YouTube, for another exciting and also very different episode of, once again, my Theatre Vlog series of Theatre Going Revival, where I cover my first play production of this year, but all based off one of the most famous detective and murder mystery board games that unbelievably this year celebrates its anniversary of unbelievably 75 years, would you believe? Join me as I am going to be seeing a play version of the very famous board game of Cluedo 2, the next chapter. I will be dressing up especially for the, uh, of course, going to see it, and as well as that, trying to solve a murder once again at Gravenly Manor. And of course, just like the board game, with which weapon, in which room, and who did the killing. You can find out once again in an hour on Exclusively Live, once again on YouTube, from 7 o'clock. Hope to see you all there. Right, yes, where was I? Yes. Now, where where are the weapons? <gasps> yep, almost ready to go. Just uh, cleaning my magnifying glass. Well, here we go. First play production of uh, fifth, uh, my fifth uh, revival theme series of uh, Theatre Going. And all based off of one of the quite famous puzzle games. Well, not puzzle games, I actually made that murder mystery ones as well with Cluedo. That's going to be incredible. And I do remember hearing about it from last year. It's amazing it's come back of how popular it was. It's going to be quite an interesting uh, um, episode, this one that we're going to cover. So, uh, yeah, I think, um, and also, as I've said before, I mean, uh, I'm no stranger to murder mysteries. But, yeah, as I said, uh, having one based off uh, that very famous uh, detective game, it couldn't be any more better than that, actually. So, yeah, well, it's going to be interesting. And I can't wait to play armchair detective when I go and see it. <laughs> I already have uh, already seen a little teaser of it already, so uh, it's going to be a good one. All right, let's uh, let's uh, get this underway. Okay, stand by, everyone. Have a good show. Let's do it.
it's Tuesday night, the 26th of March, 2024, and we are exclusively live from the studios of Jackpot Button Lewis Productions, and welcome to the theatre-going revival, Cluedo 2, the next chapter special episode. And now, please welcome your host for tonight's programme, the newly appointed private murder investigator and detective himself, Detective Inspector, Mr. Jack Wright. Thank you very much, thank you. Oh, hang on a minute, I'm sure I can see another clue here. Hang on. Ah, yes, this looks familiar. Ah, something's definitely afoot here tonight. Yes. Well, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll break character. Fine, fine. You already know who I am, don't you? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for that warm welcome as always. And once again, what's up and hello, everybody. What's up, guys? Like I say again, and welcome to another edition of my Theatre Vlog series, and very appropriately themed, of course, the revival and fifth belated anniversary series of, once again, my Theatre Vlog series of Theatre Going Revival. And, uh, and of course, uh, with this episode, as you can tell just from what I am wearing and having this very signature, which I just got earlier on this week, of the magnifying glass, we are going to be covering, uh, as we get straight on with the show with tonight, uh, I just want to quickly um, uh, remind you all that the previous episode of my series was heavily delayed and that was due to, um, sadly, uh, obviously, with uh, problems with uh, editing the video uh, in my den, uh, editing it on my computer, and it came out a lot later than usual. But also, during this time when I was editing, I fell unwell, as I just said earlier on. But also, as well as that, um, uh, other things had been going on in my personal life. But uh, with, of course, this episode, and uh, as we start afresh, of course, and even though it was very disjointed and, uh, and very um, disorganised, I think, as well, which I'm not really happy with at all, because uh, for some of you, I'm sure you already know that I take great pride in how they all look, all the episodes that I work on. I may present the show and write it and produce and direct it, but I also edit it all together as well. And uh, and with the camera I'm using, I'm also cameraman. I give myself all most of the jobs, and this is all my idea basically. And as I've said before, that I made this most importantly this show to show my love, and also most importantly, also as I've started doing it more frequently, also review upcoming shows. Uh, that I've, uh, I've had uh, had quite uh, been intrigued to find out or also if I've been a fan of them for many years I finally get the opportunity to see them uh, even though if I may have missed out previously beforehand and with this of course like I said let's get straight on with of course today's episode of Theatre Going Revival and as I not mentioned earlier on if you're wondering why I have my own magnifying glass and very appropriately dressed of course a detective hat on is that I am going to be seeing a play and unbelievably a play production uh, and of course drama play based off the very famous detective and murder mystery board game which has been around for a long time actually and as of this year marks its 75th anniversary since it was first made and also uh, published by Waddington Games and also unbelievably was actually uh, the brainchild of uh, I can't exactly remember the person's name but uh, funny enough he was actually uh, had um, uh, experience with spying and espionage in uh, the British Army during World War II because funny enough that's where unbelievably the uh, the SAS and also MI5 of course uh, originated from around that time as well all to do with uh, the liking of uh, 
we're, we're, that makes being demean stealth and also espionage. But anyway, all that aside, of course, today's program and today's show that I'm going to be seeing on this edition of Fear to Going Revival is the play and prequel, of course, make that saying, won't just say prequel, but sequel play to one that was done previously from the last year, which I sadly didn't get the chance to see. But it's back with a different story with all the familiar characters from the original board game itself as I am going to be seeing Cluedo 2, the next chapter. No one gets out of here alive. Oh my God, Rick! What happened? He's been murdered in the study with the dagger. And the gun. And the rope. And some sort of blunt object, possibly a spanner. It wasn't me. Uh, well, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, I mean, it wasn't me. Well, it wasn't me. I know what you're all thinking. It's the butler that did it. That sounds like a confession. Oh, my God, he's dead. We were hoping you wouldn't notice. When did you know? We hadn't an inkling when he stopped breathing. What do we do now? I don't know about you, Colonel, but I could murder a drink. looks intriguing doesn't it everybody well there you go there is the trailer to once again Cluedo 2 the next chapter which is once again as I said earlier on a sequel play based off uh, Cluedo the uh, of course the play that was done around the UK and it being the UK touring production uh, that happened over a year ago but due to popular demand from how popular it was from a year ago it uh, has come back and has been given a brand new uh, setting and a brand new era where it's set in the 60s and also but the all the very famous uh, suspects from the original board game which I'm sure you're no stranger to all making a ret return and uh, and we've also that being said as I mentioned earlier on before we just cut to that trailer I, um, I had no idea, actually, as I said, going back to um, who was the creator of Cluedo initially, but I can actually just quickly tell you a little bit more about how the board game come around, since once again it's marking its 75th anniversary this year of uh, when it was first made uh, back in, uh, I think it was uh, uh, 1943, there we go, yeah, so my, my apologies, so that must have been 70 years actually, my apologies, not 75, My uh, so to uh, correct myself there. But uh, the, uh, the board game was created by someone known as Anthony E. Pratt, so yeah, pardon that, and I know that might seem unusual as a surname, because uh, normally uh, the word Pratt is uh, normally, uh, uh, of course, um, uh, someone for quite a silly person, really. But um, it actually says here, because uh, the E stands for Ernest, so Anthony Ernest Pratt was his name. And uh, unbelievably, he actually uh, died on the 9th of April, uh, so uh, next month, uh, almost marking 30 years uh, since his death. And uh, like I said before, he was the inventor of um, Cluedo uh, previously, um, also, uh, well, uh, then before, because um, uh, Waddington Games actually uh, was responsible for owning and marketed the game when it first came out, but now it's been um, marketed and owned currently by the famous American entertainment company of Hasbro. But in the lead up to the 100th... Uh, um, a 150, sorry, million sale of the board game. Uh, Waddingdon's began a hunt to find the elusive creator of the board game and it eventually revealed that um, Pratt died two years earlier of natural causes and that he did not make a substantial amount of money from the game uh, like a Monopoly's creator. Well, that's quite interesting to know, actually. But um, we do actually can find out here that uh, the original title of um, of the board game Cluedo was originally going to be called Murder at Tudor Close, 
and that's actually um, what it was going to be called originally before it became Cluedo. Uh, it's known as Clue over in America because that's also how popular it um, it became very popular over overseas in America when um, there was uh, other variations of the original board game. The characters stayed the same; they just were given a an Americanized twist on the same um, board game. But it says here. Uh, according to Wikipedia on um, Anthony Ernest uh, Pratt's um, Wikipedia page, uh, he said it was during the Second World War that he had the idea for a murder mystery board game. And the idea for Cluedo came from his days play, play, sorry, spent playing musical concerts in country hotels where part of the evening's entertainment would be murder mystery games. And these would involve both actors and hotel guests playing the act, uh, sorry, the characters, sorry, um, of course, they are actors playing characters, uh, to actually make sure I get that right. In a plot which involved the murder of one or more of the guests. And the setting was a country house with its many sprawling rooms, with guests gathered for an evening's dining and socialising, but a body was found murdered and all the guests fell under suspicion of possibly committing it. By putting clues together, the hotel guests must solve the mystery and these were very popular games at the time, and giving this along with Pratt's love of detective fiction, including his favourites uh, of being Raymond Chandler and Agatha Christie, the spark for Cluedo was created. And at the time, books like And Then They Were None and The Body in the Library were also enormously popular. And uh, from 1943 to 1945, uh, Anthony and his wife Elva, who was um, born um, from, uh, I think it says there, uh, 1913 um, to 1980, uh, designed a murder mystery board game in their home at, at number nine, Stanley Road, King's Heath in Birmingham. Funny enough, uh, that's actually unbelievably, I happen to know that's in Birmingham because funny enough, a uh, very famous punk rock singer uh, previously uh, turned actress, of course, Toya Wilcox was from there, and unbelievably, she actually played uh, one of the uh, murder suspects, Miss Scarlet, in a Christmas special uh, from the second series um, onwards, unbelievably. And, uh, and I remember that episode very well. I didn't think she was actually going to be uh, uh, put forward to play one of those uh, murder suspects from, once again, the original board game. But the original uh, title, uh, working title for the game, was going to be called Murder with um, an exclamation point, and with the artwork for the board itself designed by um, Anthony's uh, wife, Elva. He filed his original patent application on the 1st of December 1944, during, like I said, World War um, uh, II, um, that being uh, the penultimate year in World War II. And he had spoken to a close friend of his, known as Jeffrey Bull, who had invented the board game Buccaneer, and it was Bull's idea who introduced him to Norman Watson, managing director of games manufacturer Waddington's. And in February 1945, he demonstrated uh, Pratt, of course, uh, to the game to Watson, who immediately saw the winning formula of the game, and after a few minor modifications, decided to go ahead and manufacture it. And it was Waddington's, um, the, the game um, developer, that uh, unbelievably uh, renamed the, um, the game Cluedo, being a combination word of the word Clue and Ludo, a Latin word meaning I play. And the name of a popular board game in the UK, which I'm sure I'm no stranger to Ludo. Uh, of course, another version of that also would be frustration, if you remember that, if uh, if any of you are uh, buffs of your board games, if you know them pretty well, and that was quite popular too. But materials uh, shortages in post-war Britain meant the game did not go into production until 1949, and uh, Pratt was granted patent GB586817, Improvements in Broad Games, on the 1st of April 1947. So there we go, uh, quite an interesting little uh, um, bit of facts there about uh, this board game because like I said before, um, once again it is marking the um, the 70th anniversary uh, this year of uh, when it was uh, first um, um, brought to life or also was uh, first um, considered and also uh, um, created as being uh, one of the most famous uh, 
of course, murder mystery and detective ball games to exist here in the UK. And um, funnily enough, actually, guys, I actually, uh, I, if you did not notice um, earlier on in my uh, little um, introductory bit, um, not to the episode, but also uh, my little um, little teaser leading up to if you were watching... Uh, uh, if you were going to be uh, watching the program from later on this evening, I do have still one of the old boards, one of the old, um, um, bo bo of course, uh, playing boards of uh, Cluedo from a version of the game that uh, both my mum and dad, Samantha and John, actually had when I was really young. And I do have, um, um, this is the oldest version that existed, so this would have been uh, about in the early 90s. And, uh, and I'm sure that uh, most of you are familiar with the board game that, as you can see, it's got uh, uh, nine signature, um, of course, uh, rooms at uh, Bodley Manor, as the name of uh, the, um, of course, of the hall that is uh, where the uh, murder took place. And uh, once again, the very famous, um, of course, uh, murder suspects of Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard, uh, Mrs. Peacock, uh, the Reverend Green, Mrs. White and uh, yeah, that is uh, and Miss Scarlet. There we go. My apologies. I was going to say there just to uh, make sure I got all six there. And um, as I said, I mentioned already uh, going back to um, the actress Toya Wilcox. Of course, funny enough, actually, due to the popularity of the board game, there's been loads of variations. And one part, one in particular, has been also a British game show version of the show uh, or of the board game. And of course, uh, funny enough, as I mentioned already. I know that uh, um, I think it was back almost 35 years ago actually as of this year marked when it was done for the very first time where loads of very famous actors from the world of television and film, uh, a few American um, actors also got involved in this, was when Cluedo aired on British television uh, thanks to Granada Television. Uh, back in 1989 and uh, and of course we will actually be showing you a little clip or also as well tying in with this version of the show um, of course we are going to be doing I'm going to be presenting a mock episode of if with to if the show were to have come back because of how popular the show was uh, all the way back um, those years ago but also I can quickly say also before um, we get underway with when we saw the show because, um, as I said before, guys, I am uh, really looking forward to seeing this because uh, I am no stranger to seeing murder mystery plays. Unbelievably, uh, I did actually, um, uh, with um, a theatre group locally based here uh, where I live, here in Littleport, uh, just a few uh, miles away from the city of Ely, um, Campaign Amateur Theatre did a murder mystery uh, musical, funny enough, last year. And it was named after the famous uh, cocktail called Harvey's Wallbanger. And um, when I went over there with my dad and we, we went to support the show, I, um, we were actually, funny enough, uh, guessed uh, who uh, committed a murder and also uh, with a certain weapon and uh, what exactly did happen um, leading up to it. And, uh, and we also got a, a wonderful uh, little, um, I think it was a, uh, I think it was a, a hamper of, um, of food and uh, drinks, which was a, a wonderful prize to have. And, um, and just to, um, uh, we just also can quickly uh, look up here on the official uh, website of the show and that um, there are two big people, the two main stars that are going to be playing two of the murder suspects, as I mentioned, Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet. And they're going to be played by um, heartbeat actor of Jason Durr. And uh, initially she was going to be in this, uh, famously originally um, from Coronation Street, uh, Helen Flanagan, who you might remember, who also appeared uh, many years ago on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And she also did the uh, South Africa series, the All Star series, just last year as well. But due to other commitments, she sadly had to pull out of the show. But uh, unbelievably, in her place is the person Ellie Leach. And uh, for some of you who might remember, she um, was quite a famous actress who um, uh, went on to uh, be part of a winning couple that uh, they won. Um, uh, sorry, not one, sorry. Um, uh, that, yeah, I was actually right. Sorry, my apologies. Um, that her and her dance partner, I can't remember his name, but uh, they won last year's series of Strictly Come Dancing. And that was absolutely amazing to see um, that we, um, of course, uh, are going to be hopefully seeing someone in the show uh, that I've already have seen. And uh, and she fought off some quite some strong competition because uh, 
One of the other finest being uh, one of my um, other favourite stars from the world of musical theatre being Leighton Williams. He was also there as well, but... Um, but fortunately enough that I know that, um, uh, as I've said already, um, it, he's not involved in this, it's only just Ellie. And, um, and uh, I'm sure that if you did actually see earlier on, um, and they've also just updated it as well, I mean we've already, uh, uh, already shown you one trailer for the show um, already, but uh, I think we might have also shown you another one because they've updated it, they've actually been um, filming uh, other trailers, uh, seeing all of the characters um, from the board game being brought to life by loads of other famous actors. And, uh, and of course, we'll be covering all of that later on in the program. So with that, actually, uh, nothing else to say. And of course, uh, due to um, how popular the show has been, um, as you can see here, it's uh, been written by Lawrence Marks and Maurice Gran. And uh, like I said, it's based on the board game uh, by Hasbro, currently of Cluedo. And the American uh, film by Paramount Pictures, uh, when it was just known as Clue. And... Uh, and it also says here, um, just quickly, um, uh, the uh, all about this play. It uh, says, uh, with all new story written by BAFTA award winners, Lawrence Marks and Maurice Gran again, and directed by Mark Bell, director of the original hit UK production of Cluedo and the global hit, the play that goes wrong from mischief uh, comedy. Uh, Cluedo 2, the next chapter is a rollicking spoof of a comedy and as well as that, a murder mystery that will keep you guessing right up to the final twist and invites budding detectives of all ages from age 8 to 80 and beyond to watch for the clues and unravel the secrets as we all try to work out who done it, with what and where, just like the original board game. And, uh, and already they've had a few reviews already for this uh, in other um, parts of uh, the UK where it's already been uh, touring earlier on this year. And, um, and the recent reviews we've had are, are uh, from uh, Self Walk News says a surefire night of comedy entertainment and love London love culture says perfect viewing no matter what your age Bristol 24-7 said the best of theatrical comedy Western uh, sorry Western Pre Pre Daily Press said sheer comedy genius one for all the family Birmingham Mail says a riot of pure fun and Manchester Evening News saying pure entertainment. And EdinburghGuide.com, the website, says this is all good, old-fashioned entertainment for all ages 9 to 90 instead of 8 to 80. Well, I've heard the 8 to 80 expression, but I've never heard that 9 to 90 one before. But um, anyway, of course, with all that being said, it's time for us to stop talking because once again... There's been a murder at the newly named Gravenly Manor, then to Body Hall, of course, or Bodley Manor, that's in the original board game. It's time to find out who done it and who murdered one particular character that's in this play as we go and see live also as we head locally now to the city of Cambridge, where we last went to to see the five years anniversary UK Tour 2023 production of Six the Musical from last year as we go and see once again the murder mystery and comedy slash play based off the very famous detective and murder mystery board game of Cluedo. It's Cluedo 2, the next chapter. Here's what happened when we saw the show. Everybody, you join me here yeah. outside of a very drizzly, of course, uh, Cambridge Arts Theatre, and here we are for the Cambridge stop here for once again the play of Cluedo to the next level, and uh, we're very excited to, of course, go and see it. Of course, my dad is currently filming just behind the camera, and you can see I'm all ready for, of course, to solve the mystery at Gravelly Manor, and who of the six suspects could have been could have been responsible for murdering Doctor Black. Would it be Colonel Mustard? Would it be Miss Scarlet? Would it be Professor Plum, the Reverend Green, Mrs. Peacock, or even Mrs. White? We'll find out in the show very, very shortly. 
And of course, as I said, I've got my own detective character here of Detective Inspector Jack Gold in taking inspiration from the colours of the characters from the original board game. But once again, here we are, and let's go and see once again the UK, the UK Tour Play version of, once again, the play board game version of the show of Cluedo 2, the next level, here from the Cambridge Arts Theatre, here in Cambridge. Good evening. You're watching Anglia, part of the ITV network, with the time coming up to 7 o'clock. Now there's another murder to solve at Gravenly Manor as Jack Wright presents another edition of the great detective game of Cluedo. You are invited to a murder. A stranger lies dead in Gravenly Manor. There are six suspects, but which one? is the killer. Could it be Mrs. Peacock, Lady of the Manor and beautiful society hostess? Or perhaps Colonel Mustard, military hero and intimate family friend? Is the Reverend Green a saint or sinner? Is it Professor Plum, a man with a degree of suspicion? Or Miss Scarlet, Mrs. Peacock's glamorous stepdaughter? Or is it Mrs. White, loyal housekeeper and devoted confidant? Six people with murder on their minds. Welcome to Cluedo. And here is your host for Cluedo, Jack Wright. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening and welcome to Cluedo. A murder has been committed once again at Gravenly Manor and tonight we're going to unravel that mystery in true Cluedo style with which weapon, which room and most importantly who was the killer. And tonight we have two teams that are going to be right let's get started and let's concentrate and examine the main pieces of evidence that led up to the, this particular murder. Well, what I do know is that the killer did happen to use one of six weapons, but which one was it? Was it the lead pipe, the rope, the revolver, the dagger, the candlestick, or the spanner? And we also do know that the killer also happened to use one of these particular weapons in one of nine rooms in Gravenly Manor. And just to quickly remind you, we have a template and also uh, the foundation map of the manor itself. But was the murder committed in either the hall, the lounge, the dining room, the kitchen, the ballroom, the conservatory, the billiard room, the library, or was it the study? We will find out as we go along. But as I would now want to now cross-examine the evidence, and we start that unbelievably, Miss Scarlet has happened to buy Gravenly Manor, as she might have some connection with the family tree or to do with the Gravenlies, and we also now join a former husband that was to Mrs. Peacock, and that being famous rock star Rick Black, as he records his brand new album, Inside the Study. Oh 
my goodness me. And still this bad weather continues. Still a lot of rain and very gusty winds out there. Thank God I didn't film just earlier on a few days ago. Well, sorry about that guys, as you can just see right now, sorry for the abrupt cut in the video there, and uh, there you go, unfortunately the uh, footage that I managed to get from, once again, Cluedo to the next chapter from the Cambridge Arts Theatre. Sadly, I am, um, unfortunately, if you're wondering why there was that abrupt cut there, is because there was, um, uh, just a few days ago from uh, filming uh, and when going to see the show just earlier on this week, uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of rain that uh, was falling around the time. It was actually still uh, drizzling slightly from the last bit you saw when I was about to see it. And uh, and also, I didn't get time to uh, film anything else uh, in case I got caught um, uh, for something I shouldn't. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said before, I didn't do uh, anything, once again, to clarify, to uh, break any copyright. I, uh, I didn't take my camcorder into the... Uh, into the auditorium but if you are seeing a picture on your screen right now that is uh, one of the pictures that I did take of the show uh, of the amazing set uh, based off the board game once again of Cluedo and uh, and you did see it earlier on in my uh, mock episode of uh, if I were to bring back the game show variant of the board game as well which I had a lot of fun doing um, I actually uh, just uh, filmed it uh, just after when I came back and um, an annoying, sadly, though, I could have uh, done this a bit more sooner, but sadly, the battery on my camcorder uh, decided to um, stop and also run out on me in that case. But so, despite that happening, I did get the chance to see the show, and uh, you might be wondering why I'm wearing this familiar outfit on my King Henry VIII, um, of course, uh, well, not King Henry VIII, sorry, uh, the Henry V, uh, of course, uh, base costume, which I may have worn in a previous episode of my theatre vlog series of theatre going, uh, but that was from the last series. I will tell you all about that very, very shortly. But let's, of course, forget about that and talk about, like I said, just a few days ago, even though that I could have uh, done it the day or just the night after when I saw the show, but I did come back late and I was very tired as well. If you can see me at the moment, I have still got some uh, light bags under my eyes because uh, I know that uh, later on this week I have got some uh, big plans to see two more shows which I will be talking about, so uh, I had to uh, uh, catch up on my sleep, so... Uh, and I did feel better for it. I did actually do the same uh, earlier on today as the time I'm filming this right now. But like as I said already, let's quickly uh, talk about and also uh, review the production of Cluedo 2, the next chapter. They've changed it to Cluedo 2 on the program and I've got the beautiful program uh, with all of the signature weapons from the board game and uh, seeing uh, the signature cards uh, from the board game as well. And, um, and let me tell you guys, I, I can actually, um, without trying to um, give away too much, I mean, for a, as murder mystery plays go, as a, for being a mixture of comedy and a bit of drama thrown in there, as well as the murders of, of course, uh, that is uh, always a core part of murder mystery plays, it was it literally took me by surprise. It was definitely the show that I was not expecting at all, and um, and it really captured the 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 whole spirit and uh, and and the whole story all merged around the board game. It was so cleverly done. Um, the only thing I can actually um, I wouldn't say I would spoil, but the characters. Um, based on, like I said, the uh, the original uh, murder suspects from the board game, the likes of Colonel Mustard, Mrs. Peacock, Miss Scarlet, um, also Professor Plum, and also the Reverend Green and Mrs. White, um, is that they were beautifully um, portrayed in various different ways. There was a mixture of both uh, British and also American uh, characters um, portrayed by the actors on stage. And, um, and two that really stood out for me, since of course it was set in the 60s, uh, a few decades after when it was originated, the original board game, um, at uh, Gravenly Manor, 
and um, and uh, the style of the show was brilliant. Uh, I know that um, I think uh, the likes of uh, the um, amazing Ellie Leach uh, playing the role of Miss Scarlet, she uh, she wore an amazing uh, kind of like a um, I, I wouldn't say a mod girl outfit, but it was like one of those um, uh, kind of like. Uh, fancy outfits you wore like a bright red dress uh, with some beautiful red earrings and also um go-go boots as well which were quite popular of that period in the 60s which i know a lot of w young women used to wear and um yeah and uh, i remember her um her outfit in there uh, was um was brilliant i know that uh, uh mrs peacock uh, was um very uh, sophisticated and wore a ball gown a, a beautiful dark blue ball gown uh, you might have seen in the trailer that we showed you earlier on uh, some of the uh, um the crazy um uh, outfits that some of the characters wear wore especially professor plum being a hippie and also uh, Colonel Mustard uh, taking inspiration from being uh, an American. Uh, you could say that he, he had uh, some uh, colonial uh, background there with a, a cowboy hat. Of course, his Stenson, and, and he wore cowboy boots as part of his outfit. And, um, and uh, as I said already, um, uh, and also one I think that did surprise me quite well, I think, uh, was also uh, Professor Green's, uh, no, sorry, not Professor Green, sorry, uh, Reverend Green, my apologies. Um, he was actually um, a, a religious person also from the American Army, so he was uh, very similar to Colonel Mustard in some way, but uh, I didn't know that actually uh, um, there could be a religious position uh, from his uh, background in the American military, and he actually served during the Vietnam War since it was set in the late 60s. Uh, the original play actually um, or the actual uh, setting uh, for it, it says here in the program, it did actually say it took part, um, or it took place in a country manor house, which once again was Gravenly Manor and um, not too uh, far from London. Oh, I actually, I know that one of the characters said it was in uh, West Sussex and um, one dark and stormy night in 1968. And, um, and yes, as I said, it was quite self-explanatory there, but the music uh, in between each of the scenes and having the characters, um, they all um, moved uh, put bits of the set uh, to as they were traveling to all the different rooms in the manor house. Uh, I remember one I thought which was really clever was um, they had like a little small miniature um, snooker table and uh, and they had uh, little um, billiard or you could say also I think uh, snooker balls on there and uh, someone some of the characters were trying to imitate uh, uh, breaking off and hitting the balls on the uh, table and they moved them in the, to give the illusion it was very very clever how they did it everybody and um, but no, guys, I remember that they also had um, a row of um, chairs and uh, a very fancy tablecloth with loads of uh, individual cloches uh, that um, that was going to be for the um, the kitchen, oh, sorry, the, the dining room area. And um, they also had uh, loads of plants for the conservatory part as well. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to uh, uh, ramble on too much. But uh, like I said, I'm just quickly looking through the program here and... Uh, and I have to highlight some of the amazing people that played these characters. I mentioned earlier on, um, I was very fortunate enough to bump into the two main people who played uh, two of the characters. And like I mentioned her earlier on, um, I got the chance to see the amazing Ellie Leach, who played Miss Scarlet. Uh, this was actually her stage play debut, actually doing this. And uh, if you are seeing a picture on your screen right now, I was very lucky enough to actually meet her after the show. She loved my um, uh, my Cluedo-inspired outfit being Detective Jack Gold, um, taking inspiration, as you heard earlier on in the program. Uh, she she absolutely loved seeing my magnifying glass, and, uh, and she also managed to sign my program as well, if you can see it here. I know, of course, the lighting's a little bit more different here since I'm doing it in the daytime rather than the nighttime. And, um, and also I got Jason Durr's um, uh, signature as well there as Colonel Mustard. And I couldn't get over how friendly he was. He was so kind, such a wonderful, um, uh, such a wonderful man. Um, 
when I came over um, to say, he came over to say hello because we were just waiting around because the stage door was just near the, the entrance to one of the entrances to the theatre and, uh, and I saw them coming out when they had finished uh, doing the show uh, when they had to sign out from the theatre and I remember that uh, since it was quite raining, it was raining quite hard outside of the, um, the theatre, I, um, I tried to um, lure them in to, uh, to come into the main entrance part and, uh, and since I managed to uh, catch both Ellie and Jason after that, um, I, I managed to get a few minutes chat with them because I know at the time when I saw the show it was getting quite late in the evening and um, but um, they, it was so wonderful that they gave up their time just for myself and my dad. Uh, my dad of course John I have to thank uh, for taking the photos uh, for that you just saw earlier on. But um, guys, as I've said before, I um, I know I don't want to give too many spoilers, but uh, um, uh, as I've said already, there are so many uh, surprises in this production that uh, really took us by surprise, and we were guessing right until the very end, and uh, when we found out there's actually, to give you a clue, that I know that there's not just one person that gets murdered in the whole show, uh, as you did see in the trailer, that being uh, the rock singer of Rick Black, but um, some of the others get involved as well, and uh, and uh, and I was quite shocked with the end at the end. Uh, but I did actually find out who it was, and on this occasion, it was actually the character of uh, Miss Scarlet that actually committed. Uh, and uh, unbelievably uh, killed uh, most of the other actors or the other um, performers uh, playing their characters as well, which I thought was quite a, a very unusual but uh, interesting uh, twist on uh, the original board game because normally there's only one person that uh, would normally commit the murder with only one weapon and in one particular room. But uh, yeah, it was, um, I think I remember Miss Scarlet. Uh, managed to kill uh, a majority of uh, the other characters in the, um, I think it was the lounge, I think, from my, my knowledge, uh, from the time seeing it. But um, uh, as I said, I don't think there's not much to say, really, but uh, I have to say it was definitely um, uh, one, actually, I've just remembered, actually, one other particular thing which I think really stood out for me is since uh, some of the characters were both British and American portrays in there, there was also... Um, uh, amazing little nods to famous uh, stars from the 60s um, uh, era and also um, there was uh, these very clever um, of course culture shock references between uh, the us British and uh, and the Americans as well and uh, and it was really clever I know that because uh, one of the weapons being uh, in the board game a spanner they call it a wrench over in America and um, and I think there was also uh, uh, when the word of um, of, uh, of the tea, of course, of um, of drinking the cup of uh, or of, of, of the drink of tea, um, has been referenced by Mrs. White in the show, that they um, they actually made a little uh, colonial re reference to uh, the shipment of tea that was um, uh, thrown into the sea um, by the the British over the Americans at the Boston Tea Party, which uh, was quite a famous uh, event that happened back in the 19th century and uh, uh, well actually make that the 17th century in 1773 uh, was the year when that actually happened and uh, that was actually referenced unbelievably that very uh, infamous event also in the Disney film Mary Poppins uh, just a little fun fact for you guys if you did not know that already but um, yes guys, um, I, uh, I don't want to uh, ramble on with this one because this was quite brief actually because uh, I actually have got to be uh, filming some other shows that I am going to be seeing or covering in some next two episodes because as I can now just before quickly mentioning that um, I can go straight on to giving my show rating for this and I am so amazed and I'm so happy to get the chance to see it and it was... Um, if you may not have seen already, I've already put a review from it on Instagram and I said it was uh, fun, hilarious, with loads of murder and uh, it's definitely a must, uh, must watch or a must see play to see if you're a fan of the board game. So uh, with that being said, I am um, without any further things to say, I am going to give my official show rating now, officially, as I was going to say there, my official show rating here on Theatre Going Revival of, once again, Cluedo 2, the next chapter 
from once again performed at the Cambridge Arts Theatre and um, and uh, unbelievably that this um, production is going to be uh, played until the 30th of March, the end of this month. And uh, with that being said, also, of course, um, uh, just a few days ago, also marked a very important day in the world of theatre because it was also World Theatre Day. So also I would uh, quickly like to mention that uh, I hope that uh, you um, uh, have, of course, uh, managed to share some very fond memories of your time, of uh, what um, the world of uh, theatre means to you. And, uh, and for me personally, if, uh, if you have not seen on my official um, Instagram page already, I've, um, uh, I've done a load of shows in my life so far, and especially going back to when I was really little. Though, I mean, I think you have to go back to the first thing that I ever did and I think I was an angel in a uh, Christmas nativity and I was that young, I think I was only about uh, uh, three or four years old and um, but um, uh, I, there's not much uh, photo um, evidence of that sadly but um, I might have to dig it out sometime and show you uh, everybody uh, to uh, on one another episode of when that comes around but um, as I, if I have not said also, um, one that I, uh, I remember very well from uh, almost now, uh, and as crazy as it sounds, it was, it's nearly um, almost 20 years this year that I did that show, and it was a school production um, of uh, The Pied Piper of Hamelin, and I played a rat. Um, and if you can actually see, I actually managed to, uh, my mum actually got a wonderful picture, or I managed to find uh, the picture that she took all those years ago, or I think it was my dad at the time, and, uh, and that was one of my very first um, roles that I played in, um, in of course, in any um, uh, theatre show, uh, whether it be at school or of course at college. Um, I mean, I, I'd, I'd have, think I have to do an episode all dedicated to uh, all of my experiences when it comes to the world of theatre. Um, honestly, I think I've got some very interesting stories to tell you all about that. But uh, I hope uh, you uh, have, uh, have managed to celebrate it in some way. And I know that uh, sadly I, I won't be able to do that as of this year. But I have got something very special planned for that. And I'm going to tell you about that very very shortly but like I said already going back to my show rating once again for Cluedo 2 the next chapter from the Cambridge Arts Theatre my official show rating for this production and uh, and it continues once again uh, if you may have missed out on uh, seeing it here in uh, around the area where I live here of just around in East Cambridgeshire don't worry because like I have uh, already mentioned in my other review on Instagram the show is going and touring across all over the UK until November the month of November uh, later on this year and uh, and you will still get a chance to see it and I recommend that you definitely go and see it because my official like I said already my official show rating for once again Cluedo 2 the next chapter from the Cambridge Arts Theatre my official show rating for this production it gets a highly recommend it and also a very appropriately five star rating uh, as well for that uh, for that for the review of this as well um, as I've said guys uh, this was quite um, uh, an easy one to actually uh, decide on it being uh, a five-star rated show and uh, and I really enjoyed seeing it and um, and as I've said already I I, uh, I can already say that if you uh, if you love um, uh, quick-witted comedy uh, with a mixture of uh, of intrigue and drama and a lot of murders for that matter I highly recommend that you go and see this show Deary, deary me, it's starting to really blow a gale outside there. Well, sorry about that, guys, for that other abrupt cut. I had to turn the light on in my room here because, unfortunately, when my also my lamp had just beside my bed, um, the uh, bulb went out. So uh, I'll have to get that changed uh, after when I've finished wrapping up with this video. But like I said, uh, that, of course, once again concludes this episode of Theatre Going Revival and uh, with that also being said as I said earlier on if you're wondering why I was wearing my uh own at King Henry V uh, base top is because that later on this week as I cover the next few episodes of Theatre Going Revival I am going to be having for the first time in a while a very stagey weekend. 
And with that, of course, being what I'm meaning is, is that I am going to be seeing two shows throughout the next two days. Uh, not from, of course, from tomorrow, but uh, um, or from the time that I'm filming this, but uh, from the start of, uh, for make that actually, as I, I contradict myself there, I was going to say that uh, from starting from tomorrow on Friday, the 29th of March, to also the 30th of March, leading up also since, of course, Easter is currently uh, on nearly on near around us, or also around the corner, and uh, and the way that I'm going to be uh, celebrating the Easter holidays is going to see two very exciting shows. And I know that uh, one of them that I did mention earlier on uh, from the last episode, when I covered Pretty Woman, the UK touring production from the new Wimbledon Theatre, is the Royal Shakespeare Company production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And I will be covering that uh, program or that particular play production, which unbelievably actually closes at the end of this week, actually, unbelievably. So I've got the chance to actually see the penultimate performance of it, uh, starring once again Matthew Bateson famously from uh, Horrible Histories and also Ghosts uh, which I've managed to catch up on uh, quite recently. I know that uh, the last and fifth series uh, just aired of that uh, not too long ago from last year but um, I know that unbelievably uh, he had a huge involvement in that, that show and uh, playing the famous um, I think it was a uh, Regency era based poet of Thomas Fawn, which I just watched his episode on how he um, how he sadly reached his uh, unfortunate demise as being them turning into a ghost like with the others that are mentioned uh, throughout the entire uh, few series of which I've just happened. Uh, the one that I, uh, I'm quite fond of, who um, is played by one of my favourite actors, who unbelievably has played King Henry VIII of England in Horrible Histories, and that being Ben Willibon playing the role of the captain, uh, being a massive uh, military uh, and British Army enthusiast. I, uh, that's uh, one of the um, um, uh, future cosplays that I'd like to cover, or actually do in the future, because... Um, I've been very fortunate enough to have played loads of military roles in previous shows. Uh, one in particular, if I've not mentioned before, uh, going back to celebrating World Theatre Day, is uh, playing the role of uh, Second Lieutenant uh, Jimmy James Raleigh in um, uh, Journey's End, the very famous uh, World War One base play uh, by R.C. Sheriff. And unbelievably, at the time when I was uh, doing this uh, show uh, with uh, Ely Amateur Dramatic Society, uh, we actually did it on uh, marking the centenary of the end of the First World War from almost now, as we now reach almost 114 years since the conflict happened, um, that's actually uh, quite a, a point and uh, production that I was part of and um, and I always had wanted to play a character um, you could say in some way might have been based off real life as well actually because RC Sheriff was a soldier himself who fought at Passchendaele uh, in Ger um, sorry not Germany sorry uh, Belgium for that matter and um, I don't know what made him uh, want to write the um, the book originally, but um, I have seen uh, the amazing um, black and white film, the original uh, version of it, and then the TV series on the BBC uh, back in, I think it was the late uh, 80s, I think, or 90s at the time. And, uh, and then the amazing um, Saul Bird, um, uh, of course, uh, film uh, version of the same story, a bit more modernised uh, from all of the dialogue that has uh, been written in the original script of the book. And, um, and seeing the amazing actor Asa Butterfield play my role. I, uh, I got heavy inspired by him, actually, uh, to play that role when I saw it. And, uh, and the amazing uh, Sam Claffin, who also who played, um, uh, I think it was um, Captain uh, Dennis Stanhope as well, which um, he and he, his, por his portrayal of the character was amazing. And with the likes of other famous actors such as uh, Stephen Graham in there, from uh, famously from uh, from the films of Boiling Point, and he also appeared in the last series of Peaky Blinders as a professional footballer for, who played for Liverpool. I can't remember his exact name, but. Uh, um, with that being said, I know, and there was also uh, Paul Bettany in there, who was um, Lieutenant. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, uh, I don't remember from the top of my head. It was so long ago, guys. It was almost. I think actually this year marks its uh, six years uh, since I did the play. 
But, uh, oh, Osborne, there we go. Lieutenant Osborne was the character he played. And, uh, but yeah, slightly going off topic with that, I, uh, um, I know that um, the, the amazing, I know I would have covered this uh, program, or sorry, this uh, show uh, from a few years ago when it came back to the UK after um, uh, it's a very successful run at the Troubadour Wembley Park Theatre where I saw Newsies just last year, and that being War Horse as well, another very famous um, war-based play uh, based on true events and set in uh, mostly uh, uh, different uh, aspects or times uh, during the conflict of World War One through the four years. And, um, and I remember seeing it very well. It was so beautifully done uh, with, uh, with puppetry which I remember seeing, my first taste of seeing that happen was uh, in the amazing uh, Disney uh, musical production of The Lion King. And I remember, unbelievably, I think this year marks its 25th anniversary since it came out in 1999. I remember it being advertised a lot on some of my old uh, Disney videos by even a young famous uh, TV presenter that I grew up with, and that being Fern Cotton, which I just discovered quite recently on YouTube, just a few... Uh, uh, months ago actually which was quite a, a nice nostalgic uh, throwback to it and all but um anyway sorry everybody i have <laughs> just went on a complete uh, tangent there but um i as i said already guys i've already mentioned that i'm looking forward to seeing uh, the midsummer night's dream from the royal shakespeare company i'll be heading to the actual theater and the actual headquarters of uh, where the theatre are based in Stratford upon Avon, and um, and it was a Christmas present also from last year uh, by both my mum and dad, and I'm uh, most uh, most in particular looking forward to seeing my very good friend Ryan Hutton play the role of a Sander in that production. Um, Bottom is the character that uh, Matthew's playing since he's the main star. But uh, my friend Ryan uh, has just uh, bagged this part and uh, he's been doing the show for the last few months uh, alongside uh, the amazing Charlotte Giaconelli, if you remember her from, uh, from, uh, from her time uh, being a semi-finalist. Or was it a semi-finalist or a finalist? I think, sorry. No, I think she was a finalist on one year on um, the talent show Britain's Got Talent on ITV um, with uh, a fellow opera singer um, who was, her uh, first name was Jonathan. I couldn't remember his second name, but I know that... Uh, uh, sadly, uh, they still remain friends, but they haven't um, they haven't performed uh, since they uh, uh, a few years after they won the show. They kind of went off and done their own uh, separate interests. Uh, but um, I'm really excited. I've already seen uh, um, uh, the trailer. Uh, it's also been uh, part of our title sequence uh, because some of you, if you may not know this already, uh, I, I don't think I've actually had the chance to mention this since the last uh, series. Um, the one of the things about um, uh, the new introductions uh, to the show of uh, theatre going now uh, revival for this uh, uh, the uh, belated five year anniversary and uh, bringing back the, the original title of the show for this year is that um, uh, I show little snippets of shows that uh, that I could possibly be seeing or may go to see. Uh, later on uh, throughout the course of this year so you already have seen a little snippet of uh, the likes of Pretty Woman and uh, even though I cover them separately in a different um, uh, inspired or theme program of Six the Musical um, I am going to be uh, go I've already been to one of the uh, Royal Sing Along performances from earlier on uh, a few months back and uh, I'm sorry actually I think it was last month actually in February to my knowledge and that was the Royal uh, West End Renaissance sing-along. There's uh, one coming up uh, later on this month, uh, or sorry, not this month, but actually in a few months' time in May, which that's going to be appropriately named the Rain sing-along, like in the nod to uh, when uh, a monarch, of course, uh, rules a, uh, a kingdom or a country for many years, uh, that being the rain, not the weather condition, like uh, how it uh, is outside of my uh, studio here right now. And um, and also with that, I've uh, I've also shown a little snippet of uh, the trailer that they had uh, for um, a Midsummer Night's Dream, where uh, Matthew uh, Baton uh, playing uh, the role of Bottom was rehearsing some lines for a play, which is uh, one of the signature parts of uh, of the story. Because I've never seen a Shakespeare production um, at professional level yet. I've seen uh, some other theatre groups that I've uh, been part of and uh, and have uh, been involved with from over the last few years of uh, um, following uh, and also um, just, um, of course, uh, having uh, uh, embracing my love for, of course, uh, for the interest and hobby itself. 
Um, and as I said already, guys, I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing this. Uh, I've already saw the set, the, the set design for the show. I've seen some amazing pictures, and I've also seen another recent trailer for the show, which we will be showing you in the next episode of Fear to Going Revival. And also, with that being said, of course, uh, shortly after when I've done my introduction of that show, I will also be, and I can't believe that I'm getting the chance to go and see it again, because I didn't think uh, she would return, is that I have been invited on behalf of uh, the amazing uh, American performer that is Olivia Miller, who you might remember, who of course was the writer of her own stand-up based uh, Two De Fiend comedy show of Bloody Mary Live. Funny enough that earlier on, just this month or from the end of last month, she is back here in the UK and doing another UK touring production of it which is absolutely amazing to hear and I know that uh, um, following on after when I see A Midsummer Night's Dream from tomorrow evening uh, the following day on Saturday the 30th of March um, leading up uh, once again the day before Easter Sunday because tomorrow is Good Friday for that matter as well since we're in the, the uh, week of, uh, so the, of the Easter holidays and um, I will get the chance to see her show again. But I do know that it's not going to be the same as it was when I saw it at the Harlow Playhouse in Harlow last year, uh, around this time, or just a few months before from the last year as well. And um, and I've got uh, and uh, she's asked me also uh, to uh, have a a post show drink afterwards. And uh, and uh, uh, of course I've been um, very uh, supportive of her show recently. We became friends over since I met up with her before her show uh, last year. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to uh, get her on camera for you guys uh, because uh, uh, if she doesn't mind, of course, as I've said before, I um, I've been very supportive of uh, upcoming uh, people in the world of uh, theatre, uh, whether it be musical or plays or even all to do with comedy as well. I've been the same with uh, since I um, followed um, Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss, who wrote Six, of course. Um, fun fact, actually, guys, um, I might actually uh, might even say this again on the episode when I cover it. Uh, of Bloody Mary Live, the UK Tour 2024, uh, which I unbelievably I'm going to be seeing at the London Coliseum, which is uh, quite an old theatre, quite a famous old uh, a famous uh, comedy um, uh, theatre which uh, had been used uh, and goes back many uh, years, uh, almost uh, centuries, I think, actually, from my uh, to my knowledge. And, uh, and I think I've got a, a few facts on my phone um, that I could actually uh, tell you a little bit more about the building itself. Uh, only when I cover the show, of course, I, I'm, I'm currently charging on my uh, um, at the moment, so I, I can't uh, reach it right now. But like I said, guys, um, I'm just going off on one again. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited to uh, be seeing that show again. I have heard that uh, it's going to be a lot more different to what she did last time. Uh, since it's now going to be her third year that she's come back to the UK. And I've made some uh, wonderful gifts for her uh, as a thank you and uh, also uh, being uh, one of her uh, um, new, I think, uh, super fans or been one of her close uh, supporters. Uh, so, I mean, it's amazing how I've managed to befriend her. You know, when I, I, I take uh, such a, a keen interest in what she does as a performer, because funny enough, she's been a performer for um, most of her life uh, since she was young and uh, and she may be a, a few years younger than me uh, she's in her mid-twenties at the moment and from New York in America but um, she does have a soft spot for um, for um, the uh, the love of theatre here in the UK and um, and hopefully that will be uh, something I would love to uh, get to know her a bit more personally on uh, on a per as I said uh, more and more on the personal level uh, from uh, seeing her in just a few days' time. Well, everybody, before I get sidetracked anymore, I'm going to do the polite thing and wrap this episode up. And once again, that concludes another episode of Theatre Going Revival, once again covering Cluedo 2, the next chapter from the Cambridge Arts Theatre. I mean, uh, as I've said already, of course, once again... Uh, the murder has already been committed in Gravelly Manor, but we have managed to solve who did, of course, the uh, the deadly deed in with which weapon and in which room. So uh, once again, of course, um, we've managed to far finally unravel and solve the mystery, 
And uh, with that being said, we can now move on to something a little bit more traditional. And uh, the next time you'll be seeing me is that I will be going all, of course, out and going back to the famous world and the amazing signature works of William Shakespeare. And unbelievably, his, uh, of course, his death anniversary will be coming up from, uh, I think, actually, from the start of May as well, actually, I think. Oh, no, no, sorry, actually, no, it's... Uh, from the start of next month in April, and even on the 23rd of April, which unbelievably happens to also be St. George's Day, the patron saint day of uh, England, and uh, and that's actually going to mark, I think, I, I can't remember what anniversary it is, but it's quite a, uh, a, a milestone one. I think it's a landmark one. I think it's about 500 years since his death. So, um, but there's, so there's obviously at the time when this uh, day comes around, um, they, uh, oh, as you know, William Shakespeare has been um, heralded as one of the most famous playwrights in the world, uh, not just here in the UK and where, of course, he was originally born in Stratford-upon-Avon, where um, that's where, once again, the Royal Shakespeare Company um, are based at. But um, as I've said before, um, I am no stranger to his works and I couldn't be any more excited covering one of his most famous works in the next episode, once again, of Theatre Going Revival. So with that being said, I don't think there's anything else for me to say because I have a, got a load of other shows to cover. Um, uh, since, of course, I'm going to be covering two shows in the next two days, I need to um, do the introduction for the next episode and then the episode straight after that because it's going to be uh, quite an exciting but stagey also weekend for the end of this week uh, leading up to the Easter holidays. And with that being said, I hope uh, you, uh, I know it's a few days early, but I hope you have a happy Easter, everybody. Uh, eat a load of chocolate, and I hope that you uh, uh, get uh, up to loads of uh, fun things. Uh, hopefully the weather will improve. I know it's uh, it's still quite miserable out there and very windy if you've been hearing uh, those um, whooshes of wind uh, just outside of my uh, bedroom here and with also that being said um, I can just quickly give you a bit of an update also as well that uh, regarding my uh, new of course renovated bedroom I'm about to move into it from as soon as I come back from seeing those shows uh, that I mentioned earlier on in this episode and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to moving in. But uh, I won't be revealing anything in that room until I cover the next episode of uh, the next Royal Sing-Along uh, performance, the Rain Sing-Along performance of Six the Musical in a few months' time. But I uh, will be doing a room tour very, very soon as well, a separate video here on YouTube. And um, as I said, guys, I am really excited to show you uh, what has been um, uh, been uh, been going on in there. I mean, uh, I uh, I just had some brand new themed uh, theatre themed stage lights come in the post just yesterday, and uh, I've already set them up, and uh, and it's looking absolutely amazing so far. Um, um, my bedding's almost done as well because I've, I've once again themed it all around my favourite musical at the moment still, which is Six. But uh, as well as that, taking a bit of a nod to the Tudor uh, period as well, uh, if it had uh, took inspiration from uh, if I would have my uh, my own um, private bed chambers as well. And um, and I know that uh, I'm uh, uh, once again very excited uh, to show you guys, and I'm sure you're excited about uh, me revealing it all to you. Hopefully, in the next few, uh, of course, weeks. Uh, because remember, the, the month of May is not that far away because we're coming up to the end of this month of March and going straight into, once again, April. And uh, it's only two months away from uh, when I see six again. So uh, so there's still lots to look forward to on the show. And once again, I'll be covering it all here once again on my official vlog series. And once again, celebrating its belated fifth anniversary and very appropriately titled the revival of the original title of the show. And that being once again, Theatre Going Revival. Well, with once again that being said, thanks very much for watching this episode. And as always, until next time, au revoir, adios, au revoir, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for another episode of, once again, my theatre vlog series of Theatre Going Revival, where we cover one of two shows in a very exciting and upcoming stagey, very, and also theatrical weekend. See you then. Goodbye.
Are we done? Oh my word. <laughs> wow, that was totally unexpected, wasn't it? <clears throat> oh goodness me, and my throat's starting to get dry as well. No, 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 I'm totally fine. I'm, I'm not unwell or anything. I've just got a lot of uh, things to do uh, since I've just wrapped up this episode. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah, everything's uh, all sorted now, so uh, we're not going to mess about tonight because, uh, like I said, I need to uh, get, uh, get to bed quite early because I know that I've got an early start tomorrow um, covering... Uh, and uh, travelling over to, because uh, I'm also staying in a hotel uh, when I go in to see um, A Midsummer Night's Dream as well, um, at the Royal um, Shakespeare Company Theatre as well. So, uh, yeah, so there's there's quite a lot to cover. So, um, but anyway, at least we've got that episode done. So, uh, well, as I said, in leading up to a very stagy and theatrical weekend, that concludes this episode once again of Theatre Going Revival.